Hello friends, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patchala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way. And today's topic we are going to talk about the pre-malignant lesion and conditions that can lead to cancer if left untreated in further stages. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to another 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes and today's topic is leukoplakia. So before we get started make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. So guys leukoplakia is as we know that this is a pre-malignant lesion. So this is a white patch. What happens? See leukoplakia is a white patch which is present in the oral cavity. Mostly we see it in the buccal mucosa. So this patch if we are trying to rub it so this cannot be rubbed unlike the candida candidiasis now candidiasis if we are trying to rub we can easily rub it so this is differentiation between the leukoplakia and the candidiasis so the white patch or plaque in the oral cavity that cannot be scraped or stripped off easily and which cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other disease and is not associated with the physical and chemical agents except the use of tobacco so what are the predisposing factors for the leukoplakia tobacco uh, alcohol candidiasis vitamin deficiency a and b complex deficiencies syphilis viral infection hsv virus uh, then chronic irritation that is the um, ill-fitting denture, actinic radiation, galvanization because of the unsimilar metals. So all these are the factors predisposing factor which can lead to leukoplakia. So what is the age group? It is usually occurs in 7, 35 to 40 years of age group and above that. So the male there are frequently involved and the common site is the buccal mucosa and commissures of the lip. What happens? This lesion starts from the commissures of the lip. So the most common site is the buccal mucosa and the commissures of the lip. Most commonly in the men is the lip lesion, women the tongue lesion. So you can remember from boys from kissing and women for smooch. So lip lesions are the men lesions. Women lesion usually are the tongue lesion. Sometimes it is also occurring in the edentulus. That way it is in the alveolar ridges which are involved. So commissural liquid lachia is when it is extended from the commissures and it is going inside the buccal mucosa making a triangle. So uh, over a distance of about 2 centimeters and triangular in shape. So in the, in the buccal sides it involves the central zone of buccal mucosa in the molar region. So it is going along the occlusal plane. So the, uh, it is in the central line. It is in the occlusal plane. As you can see in this diagram, so this is from the commissures of the lip, it is going inside the buccal mucosa. So like that it is going. So most frequently, the most common involvement is the commissures of the lip as well as the buccal mucosa. So the frequency in the descending order of the involvement is the maximum involvement is in the commissures area, then the buccal mucosa, lips, tongue, palate, alveolar ridges, floor of the mouth, soft palate and then the gingiva. So we see the sublingual keratosis which is leukoplakia which is occurring at the floor of the mouth or the ventral surface of the tongue and also we see the ibing type type of leukoplakia wherein the leukoplakia is occurring at the floor of the mouth. These uh, because why ibing tight tight because it is similar to the undulations which are left on the sand by ibing tight so the same manner it looks it occurs due to the loose binding and consequent movement of the mucosa and the floor of the mouth so it can be a small lesion we know that this is a white lesion this is a white patch or plaque which will occur mostly in the buccal mucosa region right so there is going to be the small well localized patch it can be irregular patch, it can be diffuse lesion, the color is mostly white to yellowish unless the tobacco chewers, the, now the tobacco chewers because they are chewing the tobacco so the, it can assume the brown color, it can take the brown shade. So surface is usually wrinkled or shriveled in appearance and if we touch the surface we feel that there is a roughness on the surface of this white patch. It is usually asymptomatic but sometimes the patient can complain of a little bit thickening of the mucosa. So that can also patient complain sometimes there is a lymph node enlargement that is uh, when there is metastasis. So this is very uh, rare not that common. So clinical types we have the homogeneous type of leukoplakia, the ulcerative type of leukoplakia and the nodular 
or the speckled, speckled type of leucoplakia. So homogeneous, as the name suggests, it will be homogeneous. So this is the leucoplakia simplex, most common type of leucoplakia. It almost 84% of the leucoplakia is homogeneous type of leucoplakia, thick leucoplakia, or we can say the leucoplakia simplex. This is usually seen in the clay pipe smokers, beetle, uh, quid chewers. So there is no red component as the name suggests homogeneous. That means there is only going to be a white patch, extensive white patch. There is no red component. There is only the white patch which will be seen corrugated surface with a pattern of some fine lines or wrinkles. So this is usually a raised plaque, white plaque raised from little bit surface. Then we have the ulcerated leucoplakia. This is usually seen in 13% of the cases. Ulcerative, that means it will look like an ulcer. So it will exhibit a yellowish area of fibrin which will give the appearance of ulcer. So there is going to be white patch present at the periphery of the lesion. Now There can be also pigmentation associated with it. Now what happens when there is an ulcerative type of leucoplakia and people, the person is a tobacco chewer or the person is a smoker then because of the heat there can be occurrence of the pigmentation next comes the nodular or the speckled type of leucoplakia or we can say the leucoplakia erosiva now this is mixed red white lesion in which there are small keratotic nodules which are scattered over the atrophic patch of the oral mucosa they are they can be very small pinhead size nodules which can be present but they have got the high malignant potential also we have one more type which is the verrucous type so verrucous type of leucoplakia is uh, usually this is uh, verrucous proliferation you can see above the surface of the mucosa and lesions are usually sharp or blunt projections but they are heavily keratinized verrucous so there are proliferations which we can see also we have a proliferative verrucous type of leucoplakia now this proliferative um, um, proliferative uh, verruco, verrucous type leucoplakia is usually seen with the females and the patient who are non tobacco chewers so this kind of leucoplakia is exophytic with the development of multiple keratotic plaques plaques which are present and there are rough surface as the name suggests proliferative so that, that will be a proliferative lesion and most commonly this proliferative verrucous leucoplakia will transform into squamous cell carcinoma or verrucous carcinoma also we have the another which is the arthroleucoplakia so arthroleucoplakia is a combination of uh, arthroplakia plus leucoplakia that we will cover in the arthroplakia next comes the stage of leucoplakia so based on the clinical and the pathologic features we have the staging of the leucoplakia so let's talk about the staging of leucoplakia so it is based on according to size clinical pathologic as well as the site so talking about the size that means the length of the lesion that is if it is less than 2 cm this is L1, L2 is between 2 to 4 cm, L3 is greater than 4 cm, Lx is not specified. Clinical aspect is C1 is the homogeneous, C2 is the non-homogeneous, Cx is when it is not specified. Pathological feature we will be talking about histopathology wherein we will talk about the dysplasia. So when there is no dysplasia, mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia or severe dysplasia, P4 is the severe dysplasia, Px is when it is not specified the, now site we have the s1 that means all of the side of the oral cavity except the floor of the mouth and the tongue s2 is when it is involving only the floor of the mouth and the tongue sx is not specified so based on that we are giving four stages of leucoplakia so stage one is when this single l stage two is when there is single c stage three is both of these are single. So let's see how, what I'm talking right now. So L1 it is and then it can be then it can be L1, S1, C1 and P1, P2. It can be either P1 or it can be either P2. So no displacement or mild displacement. So that means the, the L1 so that means less than 2 cm homogeneous lesion with no or milder dysplastic features, right? So this is the earliest lesion, wherein the lesion is going to be non-palpable and the translucent white coloration. See, homogeneous lesion. That means there is going to be only white discolor, white patch, right? L2, uh, sorry, stage 2 is where there is L1 or L2 can be present, right? Then we have S1 or S2. That means it can either involve... Uh, any of the um, tissues or it can involve the floor of the mouth and the tongue and then p1 or p2 it can be mild to uh, uh, mild to moderate dysplastic features right and we have next is the c2 which is the non-homogeneous type 
नाउ वी नो दैट अर्थरो ल्यूको प्ले क्या हैज गॉट द मोर पोटेंशियल मैलिग्नेंट पोटेंशियल कंपेयर टू अदर ल्यूको प्ले क्या राइट सो दिस इज द सी टू विच इज द नॉन होमोजीनियस टाइप सो द स्टेज टू इज गोइंग टू बी आइदर एल वन और एल टू सो लीजन कैन बी इन्वॉल्व कैन बी लेस देन टू सेंटीमीटर और कैन बी अप टू टू सेंटीमीटर्स और टू टू फोर सेंटीमीटर्स और एस वन और एस टू दैट मीन्स इट कैन बी इन्वॉल्व एनी ऑफ द साइट इन द म्यूकोसा इट कैन आइदर इन्वॉल्व द टंग फ्लोर ऑफ द माउथ बकल म्यूकोसा सो एनी ऑफ द टिश्यूज देन वी हैव द डिस प्लास्टिक Feature is mild to moderate dysplastic feature, but non-homogeneous type. Initially, we have the stage one was the homogeneous, so it can be white or it can be the red lesion. Then we have the stage three, wherein it is L one or L two, and then C S two. See S and C will remain. Now here two will become. So uh, a stage one we have S one. And C one, right? So uh, stage three it will be S two or C two, and P one P two remains like this. So P one or P two. So the lesion can be up to four centimeters or less than two centimeters, but there is going to be non-homogeneous, and also it will involve the floor of the mouth and the tongue, and the dysplastic feature can be mild to moderate. Then comes the stage four. The stage four can be any L, so any. L it can be any S it can any C it can but P three or P four because we are talking about the severe right so it is going to be moderate or severe dysplastic features so these are the stages and then we are going to tell that which stage the patient is now of the leukoplakia so based on that we have the staging of leukoplakia. So next comes the histopathologic features. That is either it will be hyper ortho or hyper parakeratinization, with or without any epithelial dysplasia. So there can be epithelial dysplasia. There can be uh, keratinization, hyper ortho, hyper para. As you can see, this is hyper keratinization. It can be ortho or para. It can be acanthosis, which is increase in the spinous layer. So this hyper keratinization formation of the keratin layers in which epithelium, which are normally non keratinized. Which are normally non-keratinized, but in leukoplakia they are going to be keratinized. Or if the tissues which are normally keratinized, but now there is increase in the thickness of the keratin, goes for either ortho or either para. Ortho keratinization also initially it was if it was non-keratinized. Now in leukoplakia there is keratinization which is seen. Or earlier when the uh, when the tissues were ortho keratinized, now there is increase in the thickness of ortho keratinization, which is seen. Goes for both ortho and para, and there is increase in the thickness of stratum spinosum layer, so which is called as the acanthosis. So there is increase in the spinous layer also, which is seen. And thickening of red apex can be seen. Epithelial dysplastic features. See, epithelial dysplastic features are. If you can see, there is a dis. Dis means abnormal. Plasia means formation. That means the epithelial. There is abnormal formation of the epithelium. There is going to be nuclear hyperchromatism. As you can see, some cells they have got uh, nucleus hyperchromatism. They they have got. Uh, and there is increase in the in in these cells. You can see there is increase in the nuclear to uh, cytoplasmic ratio, which is increased. Also, you can see the cellular pleomorphism. Poikilokaryosis. There is division of nucleus without the division of the cytoplasm. Also, there is increased activity of mitotic activity. And you can see these individual cell keratinization. You can see dyskeratosis. There are enlarged nucleoli and there are drop shape red apexes and all these features. Are actually seen. Uh, you can see this keratin pearls, as you can see, and also you can see there is double layer of epithelial basal layers, which you can see there are two layers of here also two layers of epithelial cells. You can see so all these are the epithelial dysplastic features which are seen in the leukoplakia. So last comes the treatment. So we are, any habit we have to counsel for the patient: tobacco cessation, alcohol, all these habits we have to uh, tell the patient to uh, stop. And if there is known speckle type of leukoplakia, then our approach is to give antifungal uh, like a uh, mycostatin, candid four to five times a day, and then review the patient. If the lesion size decreases, that means uh, we are in control of leukoplakia. But otherwise, if it is the lesion is not shrinking, then we have to do the biopsy. so a uh, biopsy we have to do if there is no uh, atypia or uh, then we will do the conservative approach if there is severe dysplasia severe dysplastic features we see in the biopsy then we have to go for the surgical treatment with laser laser or either we have to do the radiation therapy then we have the speckle type of leukoplakia in that we have the small lesions these are 1 to 10 mm of the lesion now if there are small lesion then we can directly do the excisional biopsy and excise the lesion 
if there are large lesions which are present that are more than 10 millimeters of lesion are present then we have to do the incisional biopsy and if there is severe dysplasia then we have to do the surgical treatment either laser or radiation therapy all this we have to see so this is about leukoplakia i hope that you have enjoyed the video so if you have enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below there is a link in the description box below to support me on patreon as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated I will see you soon in the next video.